So we're going to do the orbital diagram of silicon, uh, and then I'm going to show you how to do electron configuration, which is shorter, and a noble gas notation thing, which is even shorter. So that's cool. It's nice. Um, first thing, though, this is like going to be a review for you guys from like everything. So we start out, silicon is where? Right here, correct? Do we agree with that? If you think about silicon, what is silicon's atomic number? It's 14. Good. So that means there's going to be 14 electrons, right? Now, remember how we find the order. We're going to start right here, and we're going to go over, and we're going to go back again, then over again, and this is telling us the order. Do we remember this? I hope so. I mean, really, you should be, be good with this to be able to figure it out. So you're going to go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. We agree? Yes. Yes, we do. Now, remember how we do this. Remember that S is equal to one orbital. What's P equal to? Three. Three. D is equal to what? Five. Five, and then F is seven. seven. Cool. So one S, two S, two P, three S, three P. All right. Now, how many did I say we were putting in? Fourteen, right? Yeah, all right. So what you do, you're going to put in, what I suggest you do as usual again is fill up everything <laughs> until the final one. So fill up everything until the final one. Now, if you add that all up, that will tell you that we've used 12, so there will be two electrons left over. And what that means for us, then, is that we have two more to put in. But as a hint, I think I told you this yesterday, but if not, you see where silicon is right here? You can just count the number of spaces into the P block it is, one, two, and that's how many electrons go in the last spot there. So you can just go one, two, and... It's a nice, simple thing there. So you fill in two. Now remember, Hun's rule. As we're filling it in, do we ever double up unless we have to? No, so that this is the correct configuration here, all right? Do we have that? Cool. All right. Now we are going to do the, uh, no, or pardon me, the electron configuration. Settle down of the same thing. So orbital diagram, and now we're going to do the electron configuration of silicon. So this is a lot easier, and it's a lot faster. So right here, we have 1s. Here's all we do to represent this. Instead of drawing out arrows and orbitals and all that, we have 1s. How many electrons are in the 1s sublevel? How many arrows do we have? Two. So we just write a two there. You look at the next one, 2s, how many do we have there? 2. 2p, what do we got there? 6. 6 arrows. 3s, we got 2, and then 3p, how many do I have? 2. Now, I, I don't have 6, do I? It's not filled, so you just go like that. And there you go, wasn't that simple? Yes. No, you don't. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Yeah, we're going to do one. So, so, here, so you can re reference the orbital diagram. The other way to do it is pretty simple. You just literally can write it out. You can just go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, whatever. And what you'll think of, Rima, I'm answering your question. Pay attention. Uh, so you go through here and you say, it's 1s, right? Like, if I were to write this out again without having the orbital diagram present, you could just then say, like, okay, you know, looking at nothing there. What does a 1s, what does an s always have? No, no, how many does an s always have? Two. How many, and the thing is, remember, it says one over here, but remember, that's orbitals. How many electrons does a filled s have? Two. How many electrons does a filled p have over here? Six. So that's how you can do it without actually having to reference like the orbital diagram. What you would want to do though, the only thing that's not going to be filled up will be the very last thing potentially. That's when you're going to have to actually like count one, two, you know, over one, the two spaces or like if you look here, one, two, and that's how you know to write the two there, okay? Is that ever possible for like, um, say like the 3S? 
to like you'd run out there instead of at the three P if you build them all up? No, for for like silicon specifically. No, just any element. Oh, yeah, but then you wouldn't need to write three PM. Okay. Like it, you don't. You only write up to what you have. You don't need to write anything beyond that okay. ever. Okay. All right. Uh, now I want to show you. You know what? I want to show you one more thing, but then we are going to do an, several more examples. So the final thing now is called noble gas notation. So, noble gas notation. Now, I want you to look at silicon again. This is even shorter. Looking at silicon, what is the noble gas that is higher on the table than silicon? No, above it. The noble gas. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go up, and then you're going to go over, and you're going to see what do I run into. You run into neon here. So that's what we do. So now what we can say is this. We're going to, this is called, this is like a really shorthand abbreviated way to do this. We can put neon in brackets. And once you put neon in brackets, what that's telling us is this. Like looking at neon, it's right here. So you have 1s, 2s, 2p. That's all filled up. Because noble gases always have a filled electron shell, they're nice and stable. So we're saying, you know what, instead of writing that stuff, we're just going to write neon in brackets. Then all I have to do is write what's after that. So it's even shorter. It's an even shorter means of doing this. Okay? Yes. Yes. Is it always what? Like it. No, no, see, then, no, I, I know what you're saying. This will apply for anything. Like, if I was, say we were going to do, like, selenium, it would go up and over, it'd be argon, and then you'd have to go and figure out what's after it, okay? So we're going to do several more examples of this after this. Yes, always you go up and over to the last one, yeah. So here's how you, here's how you're going to do this. Like, so we're doing silicon, right? So if you look and you actually figure this out, you start with neon. What you do then, you just move and you figure out what is after neon to silicon. You just go. It's like you just start instead of starting at one s, you just start after the noble gas. That's all that it is. That's how you figure this all out. It's just what's after the noble gas until you get to the element. And when you're starting to have to do stuff like way down here, it's a lot easier. It's a lot faster. All right?